Hello, I'm Craig from Consultant Advisory. This tutorial series covers the Excel 2019 Expert Curriculum. Download Microsoft's files linked in the description to work through them together as we continue Section 2.3, Advanced Conditional Formatting. Let's get started. So this video of the conditional formatting requests uh, the author provides are a little more involved. Oh, let me introduce you to uh, my assistant here, Max. Uh, because this is so difficult, I think he feels that he needs to hang out. He likes to, to sit on the table next to me as I work, uh, and hopefully he won't be too much of an issue with us today. All right, now that Max is settled, uh, let's start by opening up the workbook 2.3b. And once we have it open, we're going to open up the customer tab. Uh, and with the customer tab open, uh, what we want to do is create a conditional formatting rule that's going to make the whole row go yellow if the country, which is in column I uh, over here, uh, matches what's selected in cell B1. Uh, so we'll go through how this works here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select all of the values in this array. So I'm just going to hit Control down or Shift down arrow, uh, and then I'm going to use the right arrow until I have all of the columns selected as well. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit Alt-H for Home tab, L for Conditional Formatting, and I'm going to select N for New Rule. All right, once I'm in here, I'm actually going to down arrow to use a formula, and then I can hit Alt-O, which will take me down into the formula line. So the key to this is what Excel wants to find is a true or false statement. And if it's true, Excel is going to apply the conditional format. If it's a false, it's just going to leave it standard. So what we want here is that we want to format when the the country column is true. So that is over here. This is column I. So right now, cell A4 is selected. So I'm going to write the formula based upon uh, cell A4. But instead of A4, what I want is if I4 is equal to cell B1. Now, Excel was kind enough to anchor that cell B1 uh, for me. However, if I leave it like this, the formula isn't going to work. Because what's happening is that when it's in cell A4, it's going to look over to cell I4. Okay, And it checks if it's true or not. If it's true, it's going to turn yellow. If it's false, it leaves, its, uh, leaves it plain. Then what happens is it goes into cell B4, uh, and it looks over, but it doesn't look to I4 because it isn't anchored. It actually is going to look to the next column to the right, which in this case is the phone one. Uh, and so what we need to do is we need to actually anchor this I in cell or in the formula here. And so we do that by adding the dollar sign. And so now what happens is no matter which column it's in, it's always going to be checking out column I. Now when it goes down after it's checked all of this first row and it starts checking the second row, so now down here it's going to, the anchor is still going to keep it in column I, but it is going to go down to row 5 as well. So it, it won't just be key to that one. So now that we've done that, we can change our format. And we can change our format. We want it filled and it's told us yellow. All right, uh, and again, because it's just told us the color, it's one of these in the bottom row of the color picker here. So let's hit OK. We're going to hit OK here, and now, thankfully, uh, when we go back and everything's applied, we'll notice that everything uh, that has Spain as a country, the whole row has been highlighted yellow. Now, we can check that out by typing in another uh, country name here. I'll hit Italy since it's the first one on the list, and sure enough, it's yellow. Let's go to Brazil. Now, you notice that I made a little bit of a typo. Uh, if I was going to do this for work, I wouldn't just leave this as a, a blank for me to type into. I would have a drop-down box with all of the countries that I might have so that my user uh, will only pick one of the ones that's available rather than, you know, if they if they type uh, Brazil in here um, and don't realize it, they're going to think, oh, um, there must be no Brazilian uh, customers here, uh, even though they made the mistake here. So you can use um, uh, Excel to uh, to data validation in order to have that drop down list, so that there's no incorrect values. So let's go back to a country that works, and just make sure that that's cool here. All right, that looks good. Let's move on to our next one. 
So next, what we want to do is go to the accounts receivable data. So I'll hit control page down to do that. Now, uh, they've given us a clue here to use the mod function. Now, unfortunately, if you do it within the, the conditional formatting formula box, um, there's no textual guides, there's no syntax aids on there. So it can be tough to figure out what's going on. So let's... Uh, Let's expand this a little bit so you can see what's happening and hopefully it'll uh, A, make more sense to you and B, we'll put it in a way that will allow you to use similar techniques uh, when you need similar capabilities. So what I'm gonna do over, uh, I'm gonna go over to column H here and we're gonna talk quickly about the mod function. So the mod function is to do with uh, divisors. And so what's happening is it's going to do a division calculation and it's going to spit out the remainder. So what we want here is we've typed in mod here. The first uh, item in the syntax of the formula is number. So you could have uh, it go to uh, invoice number here if you wanted to. You could have it go to account number. Uh, in this case, though, what we want is the row number. And I can have Excel provide that by using the row function. So that's ROW. Uh, and then we can just do, use a, a close bracket. Um, and, and that'll what will happen is Excel will provide, in this case, any, uh, or it'll actually provide the row number. And what we can do is, uh, let's go out of here. Let's just hit uh, row, uh, close bracket, and hit equal. So you can see there what's happening is Excel in each row is, is actually pulling the number from our row. So we're going to use that in our formula here. So let's go back here to mod. Uh, we're going to use row number. Oops. Uh, we'll use the row function, close bracket. Now what we want is the divisor. And so that is the number that we're going to try and divide into the row number. Uh, and we're going to use two. And I'll show you why this is in just a second. So now what's happening is it's pulling that row number, which I can see is four in this case. It's dividing it by two. And then it's giving me not the number of times it goes into that number. It's giving me the remainder. So now what happens if I drag this down so we can see it is it's taking four, dividing it by two. Well, there's no remainder, so there's a zero. Now it goes to five. It divides it by two. Now two will go into five twice, but there was a remainder. And there, that remainder is... The number one. In six, there's no remainder. Again, anytime it's an even numbered row, there's no remainder. Uh, so we can see there's now a pattern of zeros and ones. Now Excel assumes uh, or uh, assumes is equivalent a, a one is true and a zero is false. So now in my conditional formatting uh, formula, I have now a pattern of false, true, false, true. So what we can do now is we can select all of these values. I'm going to uh, hit Alt-H, uh, L for conditional formatting, N for a new rule. I'm going to go right down to the bottom. And now I'm going to type in this same formula that we had before. So I'm going to hit equals. Uh, I want the mod function like we had. Now, again, my usual shortcuts of like tabs and such to, to create a formula don't work here. So that's why I often am uh, working in a spare section of my sheet to figure out the syntax. And once I understand it, I then type it in over here. Uh, so mod, and then I want my row function, close bracket, and then my comma. A two is my divisor. And so now I know what's going to happen is every row, it's going to say, is it positive or is it not? And then, um, or excuse me, not even if it's a remainder or not, it's, if there's a remainder, it's true. It's going to flag it as a, a, a filled row. So we're going to apply the light gray fill color. So we can go into format here. Uh, I'm going to use a light gray. Again, that's not a named one. So we're, we're left to, to kind of pick whatever color that we want. On the exam, it won't do that. It'll, it'll either tell us a position on this grid or it'll give us one of the named ones. It, it won't leave us hanging. So I picked uh, this particular one here, but you could pick that one. It's neither right nor wrong here. I'm gonna click OK and OK and let's see what we have. OK, perfect. Every other row is now uh, highlighted for us. What it wants us to do is to test it by deleting a row. 
Now, if we were using kind of a normal formula, what would happen is we would delete a row and then you'd actually end up with either two highlighted or two uh, plain rows and it would screw up your formatting. So by using the mod function, we can do something like this. Uh, in fact, you can follow along over here on the right hand side and see what happens. So let's get rid of this particular row here. You'll notice though that my formatting stays uh, looking proper. Even over here on my right, it's automatically adjusted for the new row number, and I still have this pattern of zeros and ones. Uh, you'll notice how they line up anytime there's a one here, there's going to be a solid row. So hopefully that helps explain what the author has done there. They kind of just say, hey, use the mod function, but they don't really give any uh, any explanation of why you might want to use it or how it works. Uh, so hopefully that helps a little bit. All right, so let's move on to our next task here. Uh, so we want to move to the products worksheet. Uh, and so again, they've, uh, they've made this maybe more challenging than it needs to be. Uh, so what I'm actually going to do here, I'm actually going to do this wrong uh, first off. Uh, just to kind of show you how I, I would probably typically attack this if I wasn't trying to match what was in the textbook here. Uh, so what we want to do is highlight either the biggest or the smallest values in the range. And with conditional formatting, there's actually uh, some, some techniques to do that automatically for us. So the first way I would do this incorrectly in this case is I would highlight, again, all my cells. And what I would do is I would go into my conditional formatting, Alt-H-L. I'm going to go into a new rule. And you'll notice in here that there is an option here to format only the top or bottom ranked values. So what I would do is I would go in here, format values that rank in the top. I don't want it in the top 10. I just want the, the, the top number. And what I would probably do in my real life is I would highlight that green. Green typically means good. I would click OK and take a look here. And sure enough, it has highlighted my highest value. Now, for my lowest value, I would repeat the process, Alt, H, L, R. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to go into a new rule, top or bottom. And this time, instead of top, I'll select bottom. I'll go number one. And I'll go format, make that a red fill, and click OK. And so now, I have my low value and my high value highlighted for me. So. That, that's what I do, but that's not what the author wants. So that would be kind of the simple fix. If your boss wanted it done, that's probably how I would do it. Now, it fails in two ways for what the author wants here. First, it will only actually show the high value. It doesn't highlight the whole row. Now, in, in a case like this, it really, it really doesn't matter because it's just two columns. But if there was uh, 15 or 20 columns, you would probably want them all highlighted, in which case this wouldn't work. The other thing is they want them highlighted in the same color, which... I don't know if I, I think that's necessary, but uh, that's what they've asked. And if the exam wants you to do it that way, so be it. I will behave. Uh, so what we can do is let's clear all of these values here. I'm going to go to conditional formatting. I'm going to clear rules, and I'm going to clear them all from the selected cell. So now I know we're starting from a blank slate here. So now what I need to do is come up with a logical statement where one of two things can be true rather than both. Since it's either of two things, I can get away with using an or logical uh, test rather than an and. If I used an and, they would both have to be true. But I only want to know if it's either the biggest or the smallest, uh, not some combination of the two. So let's try and uh, break this out here. So we're going to hit equals and we're going to start with our or function. Now we want our first logical test. Uh, so let's start with our finding our biggest. And we want to find the biggest in this particular range. I'll hit F4 to, to anchor that. And uh, what I'm testing is if the value in this column uh, and in that particular row is equal to the biggest in this selection. So I'm going to now pick uh, cell B2. But if I leave it like this, uh, it's not going to apply to both columns. Uh, because it's not anchored. So I'm going to anchor the column. Excuse me here. Uh, I'm going to anchor the column to column B by using a dollar sign. So that has my max figured out. And I'm going to repeat it with the min. Uh, and I'm going to use the same uh, way of selecting my cells here, F4 to anchor. And again, if it's equal to cell B2. All right, so now that that's done, I can hit enter. 
and it tells me false. So let's test this out here and drag down. And sure enough, every time I drag it down, it's checking each each column or each row to see if it's the biggest. And sure enough, when I get down to this negative 19.3, it shows me that it's true. Now that works if I drag it up and down here. Let's test it out if it works if I go left to right. Um, so I'm going to drag this to the right. And sure enough, it still tells me that this was true. So if we can imagine that we're running a conditional formatting, uh, and the conditional formatting is checking whether the statement is true or false. If it's false, it leaves its blank. If it's true, it's going to highlight it. So we could see that all of these true values would get highlighted for us. Uh, let's drag this all the way down here and see if it picks up our second value. All right, uh, let's see what we can find. Okay, and there's our next true. Now, you can see why colors are helpful, because it would find this a lot quicker. So now that we're comfortable that our statement is working, and sure enough, it works for the whole row, uh, we can now, uh, the simple way to do this is I can go into my top cell here. I'm just going to highlight this statement and copy it. Uh, rather than retyping it, I know that it works. I'm now going to go over into this section here. I'm going to highlight all the values that I want checked. Uh, and I'm using my mouse here. Don't tell anyone, okay? Uh, I'm going to go to New Rule. I'm going to use a formula. And in that, I'm going to paste this statement that we just tested out because I know that it works. Uh, and we want this uh, red fill with bold. So there's my red fill. My font is going to be bold. I'm going to click OK. It's going to show me here a little preview of what those cells are going to look like. Let's click OK. And whew, thankfully, there we go. It works. So now our entire row is highlighted with, uh, with that, that particular color fill. So it's tough to kind of come up with those formulas inside the conditional formatting dialog box. So when I have to do something complicated like that, I'll work in a spare area of my sheet, try and understand the syntax, make sure it works. Once I'm comfortable, I'm just going to copy that formula and paste it in. And sure enough, I now have my solution. Now, I'm going to delete all this. I don't think you'll have to do anything quite that complicated on the exam, uh, but be prepared for it. They may throw in a challenge question like that for you. Uh, thanks for watching. Make sure that you uh, subscribe and uh, like. That would be even better. And I'll look forward to you in part three of section 2.3, advanced conditional formatting.